Welcome back to another segment of Gas Powered Thoughts. In this segment, we're going to continue our conversion of the Goblin 700. We're going to do some component pre-assembly. This will make the actual conversion a lot simpler since uh, some of the things that require some previous assembly can be done in advance and the actual conversion will go uh, very simple. We're going to do the fuel tank. We're going to prepare the motor, which is a Zenoa RC format motor, and we're going to construct the landing gear. Uh, landing gear requires some additional parts. So with that, let's get going. We're going to start out by building the fuel tank. The conversion requires that you use a Dubro 14 ounce fuel tank. It's a standard uh, size tank that you'd find at your hobby store. You need to make sure that it is of this shape because uh, that's critical as to how it fits into the frames. These all come with uh, you know, a cap and, and tubing that you can make your own fittings. But because of the way this tank fits into the frames, um, you know, trying to vent this thing would require that you make a special tubing that would be able to reach from the, the opening in the bottom of the tank all the way up to where the, the top of the tank is. So because of that, I'm going to use more of my traditional way of building tanks and use some, um, some optional pieces, some different fittings. This is going to require that uh, you drill some holes in the tank. Uh, you're going to need to uh, drill a hole for the, the uh, vent and uh, overflow fitting and then one for the pickup. And this is where the pickup hole goes. At least on mine, the position isn't completely critical, but it's going to be in that general area. And then these two holes are for the uh, vent and overflow uh, fittings. Um, these, uh, by the way, are Sullivan fittings um, for the vent and overflow. Now the fuel pickup or the fuel line is uh, a standard Zenoa tubing. It's very flexible. This is not neoprene. Uh, cut that six inches. I'm using a Walbro uh, filtered clunk. Those often come in the kit. And I'm using a miniature aircraft number 403 fuel fitting. It's made of steel um, and designed for this. Uh, these, these three parts make up the, uh, the fuel pickup piece. And uh, we're going to put those together. Here you can see I've already got the vent and overflow uh, fittings in place on the tank. Uh, those are tightened down uh, and sealed. Now we're going to put the uh, fuel in, intake into the tank. Simply drops in and uh, using some pliers or some other little device to grab it. We're going to uh, slip it just inside and push it through this hole. That's uh, why I put the hole where I did because it's actually uh, fairly easy to um, to get this done. I'd rather have put it down in the bottom of the tank but uh, it was just too hard to to manipulate it then. So you use uh, something to grab it and uh, if you've drilled the hole the right size it's going to fit really tight and uh, I'm just threading it uh, threading it through the hole here. Um, again uh, you want that to be as tight as you can and uh, so it won't leak and I'm just threading it out uh, the rest of the way here. As soon as I've got it uh, seated against the back of the tank I'm going to take the, uh, the nut and washer here and go ahead and tighten those down. You can put uh, some sort of silicon, sometimes I've used neoprene washers on these. Uh, if you've got the hole sized properly and uh, you tighten the fittings down good um, you shouldn't have uh, any problem with these leaking. I have applied Loctite to these before. Because of the way uh, they fit in the tank here, it'll be really hard to get those loose. So I haven't done that. Last thing I want to do is put the cap in it. I'm using a Sullivan cap. The uh, stopper has some holes in it and you need to align the stopper and the cap so that those holes aren't visible both sides there. Um, that way there won't be any leakage and it'll seal tightly. And this thing goes right in where the standard cap goes uh, and it tightens down the same way. 
uh, except it doesn't use a Phillips head screw, it uses a, uh, uh, an, an Allen socket head screw. And you get that good and tight and uh, that pretty much takes care of the tank. All right, we're going to take the landing gear from the original donor model, uh, just unbolt it from the landing gear uh, braces at the bottom of the frame. Those are four millimeter bolts. Uh, they come right off. Uh, that was the right side. Now I'm going to flip the model over and take off the left side same way. Um, if you intend to use the original landing gear uh, braces in the model, you can go ahead and take the whole thing off as a unit if you want. You're still going to wind up removing the, the landing gear separately. Uh, I'm going to use a set of KDE reinforced landing gear braces. So for now, I'm just going to leave these in the model. Now, the next thing we're going to do is remove the um, braces or doublers that SAB includes on the landing gear. This is to stiffen them up. Uh, the conversion actually uses a second set, so we don't need these, these doublers. You can take those off and set those aside. You will need the bolts. And uh, then the last thing we're going to do is take off the skid bumpers because we're going to be replacing those with uh, the larger ones that come with the kit. Now, once uh, you have those off, we're going to take the new uh, second set of landing gear that uh, are part of the required parts um, and we're going to set those together with the existing ones. I took the stripes off of it. You can leave them on if you want. It's really your call. Uh, they're going to bolt together with the same short four millimeter bolts that the doublers went on. You can put these in with some slow CA um, if you want. Uh, I'm not doing that here. Uh, so what you wind up with is uh, these are going to be double the thickness. Uh, you want to do both sets. And then we're going to put the, uh, the bumpers on the bottom. Now these bumpers came with a conversion. They're, they're much wider and heavier, but they go in exactly the same way. They simply slip over the ends or the edges of the skids. And the conversion kit comes with some longer bolts. Uh, you just push those through and tighten them down. You might want to use some CA, some slow CA on these to um, make sure they don't come out. But you're going to do all four of them. Okay, I've got all the skid bumpers put on. The landing gear is basically done. So now I'm going to move on to the landing gear plates or braces. I'm using the KDE reinforced braces. They're different in that they've got this uh, reinforcement uh, brace across the bottom of them. The stock ones can sometimes spread a little bit, so this helps with that. Problem is that the way the bottom motor plate mounts, it uses those bolts. So you're going to have to drill a couple of holes in that reinforcement piece to clear those bolts. Um, that way the, the little U-shaped block can mount to that and uh, bolt tightly to it. Uh, and then those just bolt together to the landing gear normally. And uh, here you can see the landing gear complete. Um, it looks pretty much like the stock setup. It's more rigid though since, uh, since the entire uh, landing skid is doubled. So these are ready to put on the model. Next up, we're going to get the motor ready to go. You're going to need a Zenoa RC format motor. The kit comes with a motor mount for it uh, and the bolts needed to attach it, as well as a fan cover. If you want to pull off the uh, pull starter, you can actually uh, replace it. You need a heat deflector. It's made by Hostel RC. Uh, you'll need a Zenoa clutch. This is the plate for it. Uh, it's a standard RC car clutch. These are the shoes for it, spring mounted. The flat washer and the spring washer, uh, those are standard. You need this part, which is a miniature aircraft starter yoke. Uh, this may be included in the conversion, I'm not sure yet. 
These are custom bolts. These are included in the kit. They're Allen head uh, for mounting. And then this is a, um, a ball that you'll need to put on the throttle control. First off, we're going to put the engine mount on. Um, you'll have to remove this clutch plate if it happens to be on your motor already. Uh, it's held on with a bolt. Uh, you need to take that out. You'll need to put a piston stop in uh, in order to loosen all of that. And uh, piston stop, of course, just threads into the top of the, uh, the cylinder in place of the uh, spark plug and uh, you tighten that all the way down and then you'll need, uh, once you take the bolt out, you'll need some sort of puller. This is uh, the standard Zenoa puller. You can make one, uh, not that hard to make. Uh, this tool works really well, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> this one was already loose, but it'll come right off. And the way the motor mount uh, attaches is it, it keys on the little circular boss on uh, the motor. It fits really tight. So I'd suggest you heat that thing up. If you heat it up a little bit in the oven, uh, it will drop right on, and then you can uh, get the bolts tight. Okay, now the motor mount's on. Uh, you can go ahead and tighten these four bolts using thread lock. You don't have to kill them. They just need to be good and tight. Uh, the mount is self-aligning, uh, so there's really no issue to deal with that. So once this is done, we can focus on... Uh, the clutch plate and put that back on. Um, it's self-aligning. I usually put a little bit of oil on it, spin it around, uh, put the bolt back in it with some thread lock and tighten it down. You leave the piston stop in. Uh, don't kill this because the, uh, the bolt will snap off and then it's really hard to get out of the crank uh, once you do that. Once that's in place, we can focus on uh, whether or not you want to replace the pull starter. The kit comes with a uh, fan plate that uh, you can take the pull starter off and replace it uh, with this plate. It's lightweight, doesn't weigh nearly as much as the pull starter, mounts using the standard four bolts. Uh, this conversion lets you pull start or spin start from the top, so you know I'm a fan of uh, spin starting. So once the uh, clutch plate is in place and good and tight and the uh, fan uh, cover is on if you're going to use that. The next thing to do is put the clutch on it. You start off by stacking the flat washers. They're not the spring ones, the flat ones. You put the clutch on and it has arrows on it. You make sure those arrows are facing up. Set that on it. Take the two spring washers, set those on top like so, and then you take the starter yoke adapter, set that in place line all those parts up, and then you take the two special screws that come with a conversion kit. You put some thread lock on them and put those into place. So now we've got the clutch on. I went ahead and took the piston uh, stop out. Don't need it. I'm going to put the deflector on. You take out this bolt right on the, the top of the fan shroud. Uh, it, it holds the fan shroud to the back of the cylinder. You take that out and uh, you take the little hostile heat deflector bolts right on. I'd put some thread lock on that to make sure it doesn't come off. Uh, on to the throttle control arm. This is probably the position you'll find it in on a stock motor. It's in the wrong place. Uh, you need to take out uh, this um, bolt and then we're going to add this uh, control ball which is a standard uh, goblin control ball. And what you want to do is mount it into the, the little plate and basically you flip it upside down. If you note the orientation of the uh, little slots, they're different from what they were. You use thread lock to put the ball in and then you reposition this on the carb like this. Um, and then you take the original screw, put some thread lock on it and put it in there. With that, uh, we've got a complete motor. It's got the uh, control arm on it. It's got the clutch mounted. Uh, it's got the heat deflector on it. Engine mount is in place. And in uh, this case, I've got the fan uh, plate on the back of it as well. So this thing's ready to go in. Earlier I talked about the main drive assembly being pre-assembled. Don't know if it's going to be or not. In, in the off chance it's not, here's the layout for putting it together. 
Uh, I want to show you the clutch bell. It's got bearings installed already and it's threaded on one end. That's actually going to go through this top block and be bolted on. Uh, the only other thing you'll need from the donor kit is the main drive belt uh, and it's the standard belt. So to put this thing together, uh, you take the clutch bell and you take the uh, bottom block with the bearing flange towards the top. You just slip that over the shaft, push it all the way down to the bottom, take the thick shim, drop that over it. Now you're going to need some, some thin shims and these actually position the pulley. Uh, there may need to be some uh, trial and error to get the pulley in the right position so that the belt lines up. These fit really tight over the shaft, so you kind of get them into position. And then you take the bottom uh, uh, pulley flange, put the shoulder down, and then use it to drive those shims on. And you push that all the way down and seat it. Now you want to put the pulley on. This thing's aluminum. Uh, it fit really tight on my clutch shaft. So actually I heated it up again in an oven, which made it larger. Uh, and then you want to just line up the set screw hole or gub screw hole with the flat on the shaft. Once you get it hot, it will drop right on. And you use uh, a wrench to tighten the grub screw on the flat, put some thread lock on it. Now you want to put the top flange on the pulley. This time the shoulder goes up. Uh, and on top of that we can put the, the top uh, uh, bearing mount. It's actually the motor plate push that down over it and we're going to take this retaining nut, put some thread lock on the threads, tighten this thing down, uh, get it good and tight, but not so tight it binds things up. Uh, everything should still turn freely when you're done. Uh, once that's done we can take the start shaft, uh, part of the required parts, slide that through. Note there's a flat on the top of it. We're going to take the starter adapter and line up one of the grub screws, there's two, uh, on that flat. And uh, use thread lock on the bolts, tighten those both down uh, so that's ready to go. So here you see uh, this thing's put together. We gotta put the belt on it before we do anything else. It just slips over the pulley. Um, you know, it, it, the, the plate is pretty much just like the standard motor plate. Once that's uh, in place, you want to put the side plates on. These things are pretty much self-aligning. They'll only go on one way. One thing to note though, uh, this screw, um, this screw right here has to be the shortest screw um, because otherwise it'll hit the belt. That's a small six millimeter screw. All the others are the same size except the two in that upper rear position. Um, it's important, you can see, if that screw sticks out, it can hit the belt uh, and then it'll, uh, it'll damage that. So that's why you want to use the shorter bolt there. All the rest of them, though, are the same length. When you get it done, um, this is what you've got. It's a completed assembly. It's ready to replace the motor plate on the, uh, the model. Everything turns freely, belt's in place, it's ready to go.